Hey. So it's a beautiful day here on Garter Stitch Farm and the perfect opportunity for us to tell you all about dairy animals. Um, and So we figured out the other day that we have been milking dairy animals for six years, um, which is a really long time. Uh, we've barely bought any store milk at all in that time, a couple of times here and there for guests. But generally speaking, we have grown, milked all of our own milk, a lot of our own cheese, most of our own yogurt, and... Even a bit of butter. Even some butter. Uh, so our milking story started with the goats who are just grazing. Right behind us. Behind us right now. Dash is very much Kevin's love, uh, and she loves him. She's the queen of the farm. Uh, she will look around me. If, she's, if he's behind me, she'll look through me <laughs> to see him. Um, of course she's being difficult now because she's a goat, although as goats go, she's a pretty good one. Uh, we got Dasher, um, who is a Sonnen goat, um, <laughs> about, <laughs> about uh, six years ago. Um, she came to us just kitted and full of milk, um, and she's milked pretty much straight through ever since, with a few months off here and there for kidding. And once for sickness. And once for sickness, yeah. Um, and she's in kid now, and we're expecting new baby kids, um, probably end of February, beginning of March, um, which is very exciting. She makes a beautiful baby, as you can see. Um, also behind me is a Emmy Lou behind me. Yes, Emmy Lou's right at the. Emmy Lou's gate. back there. Um, our lovely little Emmy Lou, who is Dasha's daughter. Um, so we use our goats um, for milk, um, for drinking milk. We drink raw milk here, uh, straight out of the goat, and it tastes delicious. Yeah, um, we just filter it, and it's ready to go. And sometimes it's all foamy, like cappuccino. Yeah, so it's very nice. In fact, if we ever serve it to people, no one can ever tell the difference between our goat's milk and a good cow's milk. Um, and that has to do with a lot of things, um, but largely it's just how you handle it from the end product. Also, our goats have a really diverse range of food. Um, so from everything from sort of kibble to, you know, goat kibble to um, hay from the, the fields right near us um, and also all the things that they forage, which we'll talk about. Yeah, so the things that they do forage, things they're supposed to forage, and the things they're not supposed to forage, yes. like my garden. Um, so we um, had milk, or had dairy goats for four years. We've had about seven or eight dairy goats in that time. Dasha's been consistent, and we have a really great herd right now. We have Dasha, her daughter Emmy Lou, and her second cousin twice removed, Ailish. Um, and that provides us in peak milk with about, what would you say, two gallons of milk a day? Probably a gallon to two, depending on how many goats we've got in. We've usually got one goat in, so um, at the moment they're they're lower on, on milk mm -hmm. than typically. Um, but uh, we'll de definitely get a couple of litres a day when they're in full. Yeah. In, in full go. What's not to love about goats? Kevin, who is your favorite dairy animal? Definitely Dasha. <laughs> Dorks. While goats and goat's milk is great and we love it, we really needed another addition to our milking lineup. So... We got we, Petunia. Petunia, who's over there. Somewhere. There. Pretty thing. So, um, yes, you were saying, so we were so, about four so, years ago. Yeah, no, so about two years ago, so four years into milking, um, we decided that goat's milk wasn't enough. Now, goat's milk is beautiful, and it doesn't taste goaty at all like you sometimes think goat's milk does, particularly when it's nice and fresh and handled well. Um, but goat's milk is naturally homogenized, so that means that the cream and the milk don't separate, which makes it tricky for things like butter and no. cheese. Also, our goats don't have as much fat in them, uh, in their milk, as other dairy animals. You spot the homeschooled kid. Um, yeah, so um, it doesn't have as much fat, so you don't get as much yield from your milk um, as you would from a cow. So, Petunia joined us. Yes, and she's our Jersey cow. Which is very cowy. It's 
very cowy. <laughs> um, so we um, got a pregnant cow about two years ago, so it was February, um, <laughs> with the promise that we would um, have a calf by June. Um, and it was a very funny story because we were running lots of um, meet the goat visits. Everybody would always ask when she was going to give birth. And so May came along and she was getting large and then June came along and there was just no baby. And eventually it got to the stage where we thought there may not be a baby. <laughs> and then she seemed to get uh, bulged up a lot before um, October. So we got um, a calf, Mabel, who joined us. <laughs> Just over, it well, just over a year ago now. Um, 15 months. 15 months. Um, and she was born here on the farm. And then from there on, we had Jersey milk. So, <laughs> I've got to go on a lead. <laughs> oh dear. She's going to go nowhere. We do know, like right? to walk goats. <laughs> yeah, um, go so, we, um, from Patinia's milk, we make butter, we drink the milk, and we make oh, cheese. So it's not just the dairy products that we use um, from our dairy animals. Um, dairy animals provide a whole host of functions for us here. So we um, milk them, obviously. We, if we have skimmed milk, we feed the pig on skimmed milk. Um, we use the goats in particular to graze um, very sort of brambly or rough areas. They really love that and and those are areas that wouldn't normally be grazed by anything anyway. Um, so the field that we're actually standing in, um, I don't think that I have any previous pictures, um, but it used to be completely full of brambles. Oh right, I forgot. Yeah. It was so full. And because the soil had been disrupted a lot, it was you know, it was really full of sort of pioneer plants that goats are really good at getting rid of. Yeah, so our goats love things like thistles and nettles. Nettles only at a certain stage though. It's sort of just past their peak when they start to dry out. That's when the goats will eat the nettles. Um, rushes, they eat this time of year. They love it after it freezes. Um, as well as things like dockin and sorrel and brambles. Here's our other goat. Give it. Um, the manure that they provide is sort of essential to regenerative farming in the way that we do it. So putting those nutrients back into the ground, the bacteria from ruminants, all of that is so critical to soil structure um, and to grazing. And as a South African, uh, as most South Africans are, I'm a, a vigorous meat eater. Um, so um, certainly we have enjoyed some goats as well as our sheep. Um, we haven't had cow yet. Um, not from our own. Not from our own yeah. um, on-site cows. Um, but, um, you know, animals obviously provide offspring and typically males eventually need to be eaten. And it not only feeds us um, so that we know where our food comes from, but we're able to sell the um, extra meat to pay for the feed and the upkeep of the animals themselves. Um, so yeah, so um, dairy animals. So this year we are, the both goats we think are pregnant. Well, one is definitely pregnant, the other one we're not sure. Um, Emmy Lou won't breed this year. She needs a, another year before we breed her. Yeah, so Petunia, um, is going to go to our good friend um, who we also um, get our beef cattle from and she is going to hopefully get knocked up. Um, in the meanwhile, in the meanwhile we will have a new dairy cow joining us uh, probably in the next few months. Yeah. So yeah. That's exciting. So hopefully some calves in the spring. Yeah, so Kevin. If, what would you say to somebody who is thinking of adding dairy animals to their small holding? So, um, first of all, um, there's quite a lot to consider in terms of um, how much milk you're going to need supplied and what you're going to use it for. Um, and that's you know, a key thing. And then um, you obviously have the restrictions on your land as to what you can keep or the opportunities as to what you can keep um, and uh, some decisions to make around that. Um, so I think for me, mm -hmm. sorry to interrupt, but I think for me, think about the expense. So keeping dairy animals is actually quite expensive. There's a lot of feed, a lot of input, vet bills, 
immunizations, warmers, feet needing trimming, um, fencing. Oh, it's a long-term relationship. Yeah, so, so there is a huge amount of reward, but there's a lot of, you know, input. And for things like goats, there's not as much output. Um, so although the inputs are a lot smaller, they can eat much rougher ground. Um, they are much easier to handle, require less space and fencing. Well, we'll talk about fencing in a minute. <laughs> um, but they are smaller, um, but you don't get quite as much milk. Um, then if you keep cows, you obviously need a lot more space um, and quite a lot of um, hard standing as well or, or reasonable standing during winter. Um, you've got choices about um, keeping your animals inside or outside. Goats love to be inside and need to yeah, have goats, an indoor goats, space. Goats really do need cover. Um, cows do as well, but goats really need... Yes, um, cows, cows need cover more for um, protecting your fields rather than because of the temperature and, the, and their yeah. weather. Um, so, yeah, so I would say that we are definitely in it, like we love keeping dairy animals and we'll definitely continue to do it, um, but I do think that it's been a big learning curve. Well, it's been five, six years of learning. I know, we're um, still learning. Yes, um, the dairy animals have huge personalities as well, so... Yeah, they're more like members of family than... I think any other animal, well, except for Loretta. I mean, you're, you get pretty familiar with them. So, um, and so, you know, thinking about who you want to spend a long time with, yeah. <laughs> make sure that you've got the right companion. Mm -hmm. It's not like you're... Um, Is that a euphemism? <laughs> this is actually But we are here to help. So we have a new online course launching um, called Keeping a Dairy Animal and it goes through everything from the big cow versus goat versus sheep debate. Uh, we fall on the both category <laughs> side. Um, and, it, and it covers choosing an animal, housing, fencing, feeding, milking, breeding. breeding. Um, it'll cover our sort of day-to-day -day routines um, and kind of an insight into what our life is like keeping dairy animals for our own consumption. So yeah, so um, join our course if you are considering keeping a dairy animal, particularly here in the UK, adding it to your holding, um, and yeah. If That's not, it. just follow us for more stories about goats. <laughs> yeah. More goats, more kids, all the kids coming this spring.